The reasons that make animals unite in groups are as diverse as the nature of the relationships of individuals and collectives of one type or another. Observe the behavior of pigeons that flock to your feet by the dozens if you wanted to feed them breadcrumbs on a cold winter day. Here is a clear example of the crowd effect, everyone acts solely in their own selfish interests, perceiving everyone else as an obstacle to their own desires. Simultaneously rushing to one piece of bread, pigeons push away neighbors, huddle together in a tight pile, sometimes piling on each other's backs, trying to make their way to the coveted feed, around which a dump has formed. Their behavior is chaotic, there is no order at all. This is undoubtedly collective behavior, devoid, however, of minimal signs of organization. And a flock of sandpipers feeding on the surf strip of the seashore behaves completely differently. In flight, the birds keep very close together, but after landing, they quickly disperse along the shallows. All the members of the flock move in the same direction, time after time frantically plunging their beak into the wet sand and snatching small crustaceans out of it. At the same time, the distances between the nearest neighbors remain surprisingly constant all the time. But if someone, carried away by hunting, approaches a neighbor by two to three meters, he immediately reacts to the disorder, taking a threatening pose. This is quite enough to increase the distance that was shortened, it rarely comes to a fight, because there is enough space on the seashore for everyone. The system of certain prohibitions this example allows you to understand the main principle of any organization. Its essence is in the system of certain prohibitions. If each member of a group behaves as he wants, this is exactly what happens in a flock of urban pigeons, it is nothing more than an unorganized crowd, primordial chaos. If there are some minimal prohibitions, we can already talk about an organized community. A flock of feeding waiters can be called the simplest organized collective. The simplest for the reason that this collective lacks a number of properties inherent in many much more complexly organized animal communities. Properties of a group of animals The first of them is the constancy of the composition of the group, a flock of waders flying from nesting sites to wintering, or in the opposite direction, may consist of a dozen birds or several hundred. A large flock easily splits into two or more. Small flocks unite without hindrance. As a result, hardly any personal connections can be established between the members of the group. And this means that no one knows in advance exactly how his temporary neighbor will behave. Acquaintance of individuals is the second sign of an organized collective. It is clear that partners can be personally identified only in a small group of permanent members, or outsiders are not allowed. In a flock of tits, whose members roam together all winter, everyone knows well what one or another of his constant companions is worth. This increases the number of bands, and thereby increases the level of organization. When a flock visits the feeder, the birds do not pounce on the food all at once, like pigeons. Unlike sandpipers feeding on the shore, chickadees cannot eat at the same time. They are forced to visit the feeder alternately, while observing a certain order. The right of the first belongs to one of the mature males. This is a dominant bird. When she is on the feeder, no other member of the pack will dare to sit down here. Only when the dominant male, having chosen the sunflower seed he likes, flies to the nearest branch, it is the turn of another adult male. After the mature males, adult females feed, and only last of all young tits born this year. So, unlike the flock of sandpipers, where absolute equality reigns, there is a hierarchy in the winter group of tits which is regulated in a peculiar way using the table of ranks.